Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's Monday night and that means it's time for your weekly wrap up and I got a bunch of stuff to talk about this week but I want to first begin by thanking our Patreon supporters and we have an, uh, two upgraders actually this week, Jonathan Domenech who upgraded his pledge and Gary Johnson who gave via YouTube fan funding. I want to thank uh, both of you for your contributions to the channel and everyone who contributes on a regular basis and watches on a regular basis too because all of those things together help lead to channel growth and that is always appreciated and it also helps motivate me to keep working working hard to produce content for all of you. And uh, this week was a pretty good week as far as quantity of content was concerned. Hopefully you'll agree that the quality was good too. I'll let that, uh, let you be the judge of that. Uh, but we had the Cal Digit Tough, which is a ruggedized hard drive. We're gonna see another one from Lacey this, later this week too. Uh, we have a Lenovo IdeaPad Y900. This is a 10 plus pound gaming laptop. It is a monster powered by a GTX 980M from NVIDIA. The timing is rather interesting on this because this is just coming out now, uh, right when all of the new Pascal-based NVIDIA chips are coming out. The 1060, 1070, and 1080s are also being made in notebook size too. And this one is running with a uh, slower mobile processor, but it costs less than some of those Pascal-based laptops do. And it's got a lot of nice gaming accoutrements to it, including a 75 hertz display. You can see that full review to learn more about that. And then I got on a train and went to New York City where I saw a whole bunch of new products at PEPCOM, which is an event that happens a couple times a year out in New York where a bunch of consumer electronics companies get together. So we saw some new stuff from Kangaroo, their new notebook concept. HP had a bunch of interesting things as well as Lenovo. You can see all of that linked down below in my master playlist if you're curious about what I saw over there. I've got a few other things I'll be showing you in just a minute uh, that didn't quite fit into any other category. So I'll just run them out here in the wrap up here in a second. I also got a look at a uh, pocket sized VR headset from Dodo Case. This is called the Smart VR and it folds up into something you can put in your pocket. So if you are looking to do Google Cardboard and don't want to lug a big cardboard thing around with you, this might be a good alternative. Not too expensive and something that I thought was just neat and new and interesting. So you can check out that review. And then it's the annual tradition of looking at the HP Stream 11. What's great about this laptop is that it's 200 bucks and every time I review it, I get a ton of viewership on it. So I keep reviewing them whenever they come up with a new one. This one has four gigabytes of of RAM and it results in a very significant performance upgrade over last year's model. So if you are in the market for this, make sure you get this year's versus last year's because both of them are for sale right now and they cost the same, but this one has double the RAM and it's definitely worth looking at this one over last year. So you can see again, all of that stuff down below in the master playlist. And now I wanna show you some more things that I saw at the Pepcom show this week. The first thing comes from TP-Link and this is their new uh, in-room gigabit 802.11ad router. And 802.11ad runs on the 60 gigahertz spectrum and it's a very short range wireless protocol but it can give you a lot of speed. So you can get up to four and a half gigabits per second on this. Now, interestingly enough, the uh, ethernet ports on this are only a gigabit each. So I don't know how you're really gonna make use of all of that bandwidth, but it's there for you. I guess maybe if you're going from device to device. Uh, this costs about $340 on newegg.com at the moment, uh, but you'll need to have a computer or some kind of uh, card for your computer that supports these speeds. So 802.11ad, as far as I know, is not in any laptop at the moment that I'm aware of, but uh, most of the major manufacturers are on board with this new wireless standard and TP-Link felt they need to get one uh, out already in a router. So it also works with AC, of course, and down to uh, other 2.4 gigahertz bands too. But if you're looking for the fastest, uh, this is it right now. It even goes faster than the ethernet jacks on the back of it. So you got that going. Uh, we also had another printer from HP that I just found interesting because uh, this is a all-in-one that's about the size of a regular printer. In fact, it's smaller than some of the printers we've looked at in the past too. So I'm gonna get this one in in a couple of days so you can check it out. It's called the HP DeskJet 3750. And we'll be taking a closer look at this $69 printer very shortly. It also has that instant ink mail-in service. So if you're looking for a better deal on ink, they've got that for you too. We'll be taking that one out for a test drive, hopefully in the next two weeks or so. I also caught up with SanDisk at the show. They are now a division of WD. Western Digital bought them, so now they have a whole uh, flash storage company in their repertoire as well. And uh, they were showing off something rather interesting that you wouldn't expect to see in 2016, which is an MP3 player. It's only 60 bucks. 
uh, and you can play back your MP3 files on it. It also has Bluetooth built in too. It clips onto clothing. And it's something that I think is very attractive for people that want a music player but don't want to run with their $800 phone connected to their arm. This is a very uh, inexpensive way to do that. It even has a color screen built into it too. So if you're looking for something cheap as a stocking stuffer, that might be worth uh, taking a look at. And Plox was there with a floating Death Star Bluetooth speaker. It was rather interesting and also overpriced at $179, but I guess that Star Wars license costs a lot of money. The only problem with it is that it doesn't float like that without some guidance. So you have to get a, a funnel that they give you in the box out before you turn it on in order to get it to float the way you do. And you have to be careful because if you knock it too hard or you get it wrong when you per first uh, set that guide up, it crashes into the side of the pedestal. It's got a pretty strong magnet in there uh, to do that levitation. So a little scary sometimes. So once it's floating, it'll stay there and kind of a nice conversation piece. And uh, maybe if you've got $179 to burn and a Star Wars fan in your life, they might appreciate that around the holidays. Quick news item, which is the recall of the Galaxy Note from Samsung. Uh, what I found interesting about this story is that uh, so many phones have not been turned in yet. And I have a feeling that people aren't doing that because there aren't any replacements out at the time that I'm recording this video. So a lot of folks would be without a phone uh, while they wait for something to come in to replace the one they're trading in. But pretty big story, and we'll see how all of this turns out in the end. I was just curious if any of you have one of those Note 7s, and uh, if so, have you turned it in yet, or are you going to wait until the replacements are available? I'd just be curious to hear uh, what your stories are with that. You can leave them down in the comments below. And now it's time for some Q&A, and I got two comments on my CalDigit Tough review that got me thinking I could have explained the performance to price ratio a little better in that review. Typically what I do if I have an expensive drive is I talk about how a cheaper drive might perform the same and then kind of give you reasons why you might want to go for something more expensive. And I didn't do that in that video. I showed how the drive performed, but I didn't put it in the context of something that might cost less. So the truth is, yes, you could probably buy this $60, $90 drive uh, and get the same performance that you would out of something that might cost $150 or so. We're going to be reviewing uh, another rugged drive from Lassie later this week that uh, will cost around $160, $180, bucks, and I can guarantee you that this drive is going to perform the same as this one. So if performance is all you care about, there's no need to buy one of these expensive fancy drives because the cheap ones will do just fine, and in many cases they have the same mechanism inside of them. But uh, the price increase that you will pay for a rugged drive uh, will get you some peace of mind. Some people have requirements that their uh, employer requires that the products meet certain ruggedness standards or waterproofing standards or whatever. And those are the kinds of things you will get from a more expensive product. But uh, in the end, if you are just looking for performance and are careful with your stuff, uh, then a cheaper drive is all you need. You just need to be careful with it. Because I can tell you holding this thing right now, if I really wanted to, I could be one of those channels that destroys something by bending it in half. Because this is really, it's not flimsy, but it can certainly uh, be broken very easily. Whereas this one uh, will take a lot more effort, probably some hydraulics to really uh, put a dent in it versus is something like this that anyone could uh, wreck on their own. So that's really some of the differences there. I mean, we can point to examples in the auto industry where you can get a cheap car that might go as fast as a more expensive one, uh, but there's always quality differences between them. And that is often the, uh, the thought process that you have to make when you go and look for these products. So one thing I'll try to do better is point out the fact that uh, there are drives that cost less that perform the same. So you don't always need uh, that fancy packaging if you are just looking for something quick and uh, effective in your choice of hard drives. And Sean Coley writes in with a very good observation about network attached storage boxes. He's in the market for a Synology drive right now. And he noticed that when he looked at the CPU and the RAM that they include, he could probably build it himself for 50 or 80% less money than what Synology might charge you for uh, what is essentially the same hardware. And he is absolutely correct about that. Every one of us could go out right now, buy ourselves an i5 processor, a motherboard, some RAM, and a bunch of hard drives, and get a really functional home network attached storage system that we could build ourselves for less money. And uh, you can do that, and you might be happy with it. But here's the thing. Sean here is building himself a new business, a photography, cinematography, and photo booth business. And he's going to be storing uh, anywhere from two to six terabytes of his clients' photos every year. And I think in the case of a small business owner, you might want to think a little bit about uh, your time investment. Because if you build this thing, certainly it takes a little time to build the device, uh, but you have to maintain it. It's on you for keeping that thing up and running all the time. And in many cases, you're building a PC that wasn't engineered to be a network attached storage server. It was engineered to be a general computer. And there will always be quirks and issues that might uh, crop up along the way. I know that my uh, little media server PC in the next room, I have to deal with something on that far more often than I have to deal with on my Synology NAS that's running right next to it. That Synology NAS has been running for three years 
uh, without a single issue. It is always available when I need it. And that's been a very good lesson for me, especially as I'm building my own business here with the YouTube channel, is that every minute that I'm not spending sitting in front of this camera talking to you is uh, essentially time wasted that I am potentially losing money on. And I think if you are a business owner, you need to think about how valuable your time is. And while yes, you can build something for a lot less money up front, uh, what's the cost and time going to be moving forward when something goes awry with it? What's nice about these NAS devices, they have awesome backup uh, capabilities built in, uh, both cloud and onto external storage. They uh, work very reliably. When there is a problem with a drive, it's often as simple as just swapping one in and uh, taking one out and you are back up and running and it'll rebuild in the background while you can keep working. And uh, like I said, they just seem to work better because they are designed as appliances to serve files versus something that's more of a general computer. And I'll give you another example. Uh, in my video production here, when I first started, I was using uh, some lower cost hardware. Sometimes I was even trying to do things like you see here on the screen using a computer and uh, it never worked right. There was always a lot of tweaking and other things that I had to do to get my videos working properly. And as the channel uh, grew, I was able to invest in better equipment. And one of the things that I bought was a TriCast. Now, on the surface, the TriCaster is a PC that uh, has been specially designed for video production. But what's nice about the TriCaster is that although it's very expensive, when I turn it on, it works. I have never had a problem producing video with the TriCaster because it's designed to do exactly what you're seeing here. I can't play Minecraft on it or do anything else, but I can get my video work done. And for me, that was a very worthwhile investment because my time is very limited. And when I come down here to make a video, I need it to work. So I turn it on, I sit down, and I start talking, and that is... Uh, what I do and this is one of the things that uh, that investment has enabled me to do better. So I think as a small business owner you definitely want to look at maybe spending a little bit more on an appliance that will maintain itself, is designed to maintain itself and will give you less headaches over time and while you can build it yourself you may not want to be your own IT manager when you've got other things to do to keep your business running. And I had a nice back and forth here with LAC about the definition of the word journalism in the 21st century and this was in regards to uh, last week's wrap up where I talked about somebody who was at a county fair and they were taking some video of a car show and there was some audio playing on the loudspeaker in the background and guess what? Some record company who has access to YouTube's very efficient takedown mechanism uh, dinged them for it and I called the act of you know, taking some video at that car show, an act of journalism. And I think LAC kind of disagreed with that, saying that the word is being used too excessively nowadays. And I really disagree. I think that uh, we're in an age now where more people can be journalists than they could be in the past. So in the past, we had a significant scarcity of distribution. It was very expensive to disseminate a message to a mass audience. In the 21st century, the cost on that has reduced dramatically, so much so that a platform like YouTube can afford to allow anyone with a smartphone to take a video and upload it and reach as many people as they can uh, to hear that message. And here in the United States, everyone knows about our right to free speech, but in that same amendment that granted us the right to free speech, there's also a freedom of the press. And uh, thankfully, the Founding Fathers never defined what a press is. Really, if you are uh, calling yourself a press and communicating yourself out to the world, uh, that, for me at least, and I think for many legal scholars out there, should meet the threshold of what journalism is. And I do think it's very dangerous dangerous uh, to have anyone define what a journalist is or isn't because if YouTube could define that, uh, that will significantly change the landscape to a point where some people will be allowed to report on things and other people won't. So what would be the threshold in which you would call someone a journalist versus not? Uh, maybe we'd have a situation where governments would start licensing journalists, which I think would be tremendously dangerous to have occur, especially uh, in this country. So uh, this is the kind of stuff that we need to start talking about and I think we need to recognize that because messages now are free to disseminate to the world, we are going to have a lot more journalists and let society itself at large uh, decide what is journalism versus what isn't and have the law protect everyone, even in the case of their ability to make money off of their speech if they so choose. If somebody has an audience, they should have a right to earn money off of that audience. And right now we have a situation where uh, big corporations for very, uh, very draconian uh, reasons and tactics are taking down uh, people's individual voices and my theory is it's happening a lot more than many people realize. That case of the car show is a great example. We don't hear about these things and all these outrage videos going on on YouTube because these folks have very small audiences. But irrespective of your audience size, uh, your speech should be protected. You're responsible for your words, but nevertheless, your speech should be protected. I don't care if it's offensive, if it's, uh, if it's uh, controversial. Everyone has a right to say stuff and society can be the judge of what is and isn't. Uh, but in this case, we have a scenario where little independent journalists like me 
are at a significant disadvantage in reporting things that might be critical of large companies because they can very easily uh, push the takedown button and put our voices somewhere where they can't be heard. And this week's Q&A for you is going to be the same question I asked last week. I still want to get a few more examples of uh, videos that you may have uploaded that were uh, either taken down or given a copyright notice that you think was uh, given to you unfairly. I've already got a couple of really great examples. I want to get a few more, and I'll probably do a video in the next week or two uh, going through some of these examples because, again, I think there's so many voices being silenced right now on YouTube or being discouraged from continuing their voices uh, that we really need to start bringing more of these stories out into the public light uh, beyond just some of the big YouTubers who are dealing with this. So, any event, back to technology. Let's take a look at what we're doing this week on the channel. Uh, I got one of these coming, and I bought this on uh, Walmart the other day. Uh, this is an Asus laptop. It's $309, powered by an AMD A10 APU. My theory is, given our experience with our $315 gaming PC, is that this might actually be a nice little sub $400 uh, gaming laptop. We're going to find out when it comes in, but I should have it tomorrow. Uh, give me a couple of days on this to do a good proper test of it, but hopefully this week it'll be a priority. We'll test this out and see uh, what this little A10 chip is capable of and whether or not you can do some decent gaming on a cheap laptop. We also got the, uh, this is the Logitech Pro G mouse, and we'll be looking at that probably later in the week. That one might go up uh, tomorrow, I think. I already got that video shot, so a uh, no frills mouse, but it does work pretty nicely, so you'll see how that works. We're also going to take another look at the Google OnHub router. I looked at this about a year ago, uh, but they've added some new features that now provide some home automation to the mix, and you can now control your Philips Hue bulbs with your OnHub router, so you'll see how that works, and they've added guest uh, networking functionality. And yes, we hopefully will get to that uh, i3 build. I think this weekend I may have some time finally to uh, start putting this together, so we'll be playing around with my uh, test bed there and seeing how all that works. And I don't know if I'm going to get to it this week, but I definitely wanted to let you know that the PowerUp FPV, which is a uh, little paper airplane engine that you can control with a pair of Google Cardboard and uh, has some Parrot AR drone technology built into it also that allows you to fly these paper airplanes with a smartphone. And this one is an upgrade over the PowerUp 3.0. I looked at probably about two years ago. Uh, that video, the PowerUp 3.0 video, is my biggest video ever. I've got over a million views on it. So now that the uh, new and improved product is out, I'm hoping to get as many on that one too. So we'll take that out for a spin and see how it works. And of course, we got that ruggedized lacy hard drive. We'll see how much of this stuff I actually get done this week, but uh, I've got a lot of good stuff on the horizon that I'm excited to share with you. We're getting into the holiday uh, shopping season very shortly, so I'm hustling to get as much content up on the channel as possible. So keep sending me your suggestions too of things that you're interested in checking out. If you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. We also have YouTube fan funding at lon.tv. I'm getting my business stuff going soon. We're going to have some staff here to hopefully help me out pretty soon, and those funds will go to help pay that person once I get around to actually getting all the work done to hire them. It's a lot of work to get people hired these days. I've talked about that before, too. Uh, you can engage with the channel at lon.tv slash email for my email list. Facebook page is at lon.tv slash Facebook. I post there all the time, so definitely follow me there for additional items that I may not talk about here on the channel. Lon.tv slash Reddit for the Reddit page and Lon.tv slash store to buy the, all the stuff that I reviewed on the channel and now am getting rid of. Hopefully, we'll be adding some more inventory over the next couple of days. That'll do it for this week's weekly wrap up. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.